results. Sometimes you have to repeat the same prayer over and over and over until the results uh, manifested. But uh, most of the time, uh, like in this particular case, it, it, it happened right away, and the person was healed, and the doctors were astonished that uh, there's absolutely no uh, adverse effect. You know, sometimes they lose uh, speech or, uh, you, you know, the use of the hand and so on, but absolutely no uh, adverse results. So actually, same principle can be applied that you command the oil spill to be reversed back into the barrel and also whatever that is already damaged will be neutralized and uh, by, you know, neutralized so that uh, it will not uh, damage the entire ocean and, uh, uh, you know, uh, fish and human beings. I asked you that because I thought it was a very good example of something that is a disaster that we're all responding to in some way, shape, or form that we can command and pray on behalf of that, aside from doing what you said in the fishing example, aside from that, which is also doing what we can in the natural. Oh, in the natural, we need to do that too, yeah, and, uh, you you know, doing the uh, natural remedies, but also I believe the entire country, uh, well, entire humanity needs to repent before God of all of the uh, uh, disastrous things that, uh, you know, misuse, abuse of environmental resources, you know, God-given resources, we abused it and misused, and uh, I think every uh, uh, advanced uh, nations and really need to repent of the misuse and abuse of the God's resources. What do you mean by the word repent? What does that mean? Repent means turn around and do the exact opposite. So repent is not just being sorry, but... Uh, Taking corrective action. Correct, corrective action. Well, for example, if, you, if you're going uh, the, the, the wrong way, heading the wrong way toward darkness, you turn around and face the right way, face the light of God, instead of facing darkness of the enemy. What do you mean by the enemy? Well, any, uh, the enemy of God, that is the demonic forces and the, the things, uh, uh, spirits who were instigating all these disasters, as well as the uh, uh, pleasure-seeking lifestyle and selfishness. You see, I think... Uh, uh, behind human selfishness and uh, inhumanity to uh, other humans is the fallen nature of man and originated in, in Adam and Eve. And uh, that I used to think of it as a fairy tale, but uh, that's, that's the truth. And the whole humanity was, uh, uh, became sinful, and the sin nature came in and so only way we can get out of that, uh, you know, disastrous nature is to receive Jesus, Yeshua, into our heart and uh, receive a new nature, new godly nature. And then uh, all of us band together in faith can actually reverse all of the uh, uh, evils that in violence and, you know, uh, inhuman activities in the world. That's beautiful. Including the war and, you know, the violence. You see, many people said, if God is real, why why wouldn't he stop the violence and, you know, uh, wars? Well, my answer is this. If God wants to stop violence and evil, all he has to do is to eliminate any selfish persons. And guess what? That would be all of us. Eliminate all of us. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, or he can another way to, of doing it is he can eliminate all free will from human beings. 
then of course we wouldn't necessarily have the challenges that we have. Well, that's right. But uh, if uh, free will is eliminated, then we are like robots and, uh, you know, we have to obey regardless. We cannot rebel, but you see, God chose to make human beings with a free will so that we will choose to believe him, we will choose to obey him, we will choose to love one another. There are so many people in so many different religious beliefs and ideologies and paradigms, and also people from different cultures that grew up in those cultures that learned their parents' religion. Oh, of course. Every single religion in the world. Now, the difficult question is that even though I have been witness to the incredible facilitative prayers that you've done and the miracles that have happened in your presence, I've interviewed Sister Chang Kong, who's the right hand of Thich Nhat Hanh. I'm a student of Thich Nhat Hanh and Sister Chang Kong. There are many people that I've interviewed and met in my life who are about as close to God as you can get. They have a different translation of that godliness. Okay. And they're healers, and they've healed and helped people all over the world. And I just want you to know that it would be very interesting to facilitate maybe at another time a conversation with some of these people that I've met across the world who are remarkable healers, have a different translation okay. and communication for calling upon the love of God and the supernatural in a different way, and yet get remarkable results. Yeah, that would be very uh, uh, interesting and inspiring because, you know, I don't want to confront or uh, debate or anything. It would just be sharing uh, the truth and then experiences, and I might learn something, but also I want to uh, contribute to something, you, you know, they, they already believe. Absolutely. And I want to ask you something that has come to me to ask you. There's a lot of preoccupation right now in the Christian communities about end times. Mm -hmm. Now, my concern about all the talk about end times is that it's like on a biophotonic level, we're commanding it, confirming it, almost calling it in. And I feel like we're not supposed to call in end times. We're not supposed to confirm that the world's, quote, going to hell in a handbasket or all this terrible stuff that's happening. And I feel like we have a vibrational commitment and consciousness that shouldn't be saying and invoking constantly, oh, everything's getting worse. Oh, the end times are coming. No, no, oh, no, no. You know what I'm saying? We can actually delay the end times disasters and, of course, the judgment of God, too. And I, I believe the judgment of God has to come. That, that is already prophesied, and uh, it, it will happen. But within our generations and our next generations and so on, we can still hold back... And in fact, God himself said so. He, he will hold back the judgment time if we truly repent. And uh, so the, there is a possibility of, you know, uh, with praying and a positive attitude and uh, hope, not just the, uh, you know, uh, gloom and... Uh, uh, gloom and doom. Yeah, yeah, gloom and doom. And uh, if they keep talking, and they will hasten it. Talk about that before we complete this interview. Talk about the power of the word and hastening what it is we're speaking about. Well, this is all go back to the law of attraction, which is the same uh, as the uh, sowing and reaping in the biblical terms. Okay, law of attraction is that whatever you hold true inside of you, whether in silent thoughts or words spoken, or imageries and emotions associated with it. This is very important part. Emotions will actually put the uh, warmth, you know, the energy back uh, to enhance the uh, energy that you present. And so whatever you broadcast or emanate, you attract. And that's why I have a great concern. A lot of people want me to invite certain guests on my show mm -hmm. that are very, quote, popular in the media. 
Okay. But their messaging and their meta messages are gloom. 